whenever we hear testimonies you should try and put yourself into the shoes of the testifiers if you happen to be the mother of that child that was seriously demon possessed when I laid hands on him last month I had goes out to him because they tied his hand to his leg and then used something again to tie his neck to the same leg. The devil is a bad devil. But thank God for the Lord of hosts. And before, before I ask you to praise him tonight, his case reminded me of the case of a woman wealthy woman I had this peculiar problem that whatever she ate she vomited and went to all manners of hospitals and they couldn't see anything wrong because demons don't appear on x-ray and then they brought her to the headquarters And even as I said, let someone shout, as she shouted, hallelujah, she vomited. She vomited a worm and that was the end of her problem maybe if you really praise God this evening your problems might just end before we do any other thing Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm a bush. Glory be to God. Thank you.
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. We bless your name, O oh Lord, and we confess you that you are the Lord. We bless. and Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. We want to say with all our hearts, thank you for January, thank you for February, thank you for March, thank you for April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for July. Thank you for August. Thank you for September. Thank you for October. Thank you for November. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Daddy, you have brought us thus far this year. Please see us through to January. Tonight, in a very, very special way, let your wind blow. Let your wind blow in our favor. Before the sun rises tomorrow, my Father and my God, I pray that we will all sing the songs of victory. Thank you, Almighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. I want you to shake hands with one or two people, prophesy to them, and say, the wind will blow in your favor tonight. Amen. And then you may please be seated, except for those born in the month of November. If you are born in the month of November, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so many of you. Father, I want to thank you for your children born in the month of November. November is the 11th month of the year. And 11 is 10 plus 1. Double grace plus one. In every area of the lives of these your children, give them more than sufficient grace. 
Give them more than sufficient blessings. More than sufficient joy. More than sufficient miracles. More than sufficient anointing. Just let it be well with them. Let their joy overflow. And let them serve you like nobody else. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My children of November, shout another hallelujah. I want to congratulate every one of you for seeing the last Holy Ghost service of the year. Because by next month, it will be Congress. And the Congress begins from December the 9th and throughout the week. And the theme, as you know already, is Onward Christian Soldiers. The theme alone should tell you that the Congress this year is not going to be ordinary. It's going to be one mighty spiritual warfare. You're not going to come just for you to be healed, but to become an extension of the hand of God to heal others. The first night, Monday the 9th, is going to be praise night. We are going to be praising God all night long. And you can be sure of one thing. You praise God like that, the, the earth will shake. The second day in the evening, you'll be hearing me sharing with you on subduing the flesh. That's going to be telling you the secret of victory. You don't want to miss that. On Wednesday, you'll be learning about how to subdue sickness and disease. It's going to be a healing service on Wednesday. On Thursday, I shall be talking to you on subduing demons. And if you see what demons can do to human beings, you will want to learn how to deal with situations like that. And then, of course, Friday will be the theme itself, Onward Christian Soldiers. And then on Saturday, we will have Holy Communion service as well as anointing service. And we'll be talking on new wine and fresh anointing. During the day, of course, we will be hearing from mighty men of God, ministers from all over the world. This year's Congress is going to be a Congress the kind we have never seen before. But tonight, we are to talk on the wind of change. I want to thank the pastor who spoke first. I want to thank God for his testimony. If the testimony alone is what we heard tonight, uh, that should be enough to go home rejoicing. It shows that there is a God who can turn condemned prisoners 
to preachers. When, <laughs> when someone is being prepared for execution, and he could turn to the reverend who had come to prepare him for heaven and say, Sir, are you born again? You say you want to prepare me for heaven. Are you sure you are coming to heaven yourself? It takes God to do that kind of thing. It gives hope to those of us who have relatives who are yet to be born again. Because God is no respecter of persons. And all those relatives that you think can never, never receive Jesus Christ, why don't you preach to them one more time? It's very possible that by the time you come for the Congress, they will come along with you. I've said it again and again, if we are looking for evidence that God can do the impossible, I'm an example. I've said it before that I was so rotten that if I were Jesus Christ, I don't think I would save a boy. But he did. And that's why I'm sitting down before you today. Because he can make everything new. It's my prayer for someone here today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything that are old, that are rotten, that are devilish in you, will end tonight. I thank God for the testimony of my friend who came from Kirikiri prison. That's where we met. <laughs> I thank God that he said, uh, rise, led him to Christ. Because by the grace of God, for several years, we've been taking food to Kirikiri prison. And uh, And once a year, until the people in power stop me from going, I used to go to Krikri prison around Christmas time to go and share with them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, one of them ended up becoming a pastor over there. Uh, <laughs> By the grace of God, we are already building a church there. The chapel there we had renovated. By the grace of God, well, we've done one or two things, but you see, the Bible says, whatever your right hand is doing, the left should they know. One of these days, Maybe I will take one of you to go with me to Kirikiri prison. Many of you will volunteer to come along, to come and share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was a young guy, Christian, because I'm still young, one pastor who took me under his wing, Papa Talabi of blessed memory, he said, come along, let's go to Kirikiri prison. I must tell you, I wasn't comfortable. Then we went there, we had a service, and there was this young man on the organ, one little organ there. And as he was playing, he was dancing. I asked the old man who took me, ah, that man is so happy. Is he going to be released next week or what? Oh, he said, oh, he's there for life. Oh, life? 
and he's still so happy. Oh, he said because he had found Jesus Christ. So he knows you can put him behind bars, but his soul is free. And he's looking forward to one day. And he was 25 years old. That's when I fell in love with uh, Kirikiri Prison. And I tell you, I've seen God perform miracles there. But I want to start by praying for someone. You see, it's, it's not those in Kirikiri Prison who are really prisoners, you know. There are people outside the prison that are bigger prisoners. There are people who are walking about who are not handcuffed like that boy. But they are in serious trouble. I pray today that before this night is out, the wind will blow away all your shackles. And those of you who are in prison, prison of unforgiveness, of hatred, of bitterness, of laziness, of oversleeping, of overeating. You are coming out of prison tonight. Well, very quickly because of time, let's turn to John chapter 3, verse 8. John 3, verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. There is a link between the wind and the movement of the Spirit of God. The wind is something you cannot see, but you can see its actions. When the wind is blowing, on the flowers in the field, you can see the fl flower moving this way, moving that way. But you can't see what is causing it to do that. When the wind is blowing on you, you can feel the effect, but you can't see it. When someone becomes born again, he looks the same on the outside. But on the inside, something had happened. And the action will begin to show. The wind of change that is going to blow in favor of some people tonight, we change them physically, change them spiritually, and change them forever. But let me very quickly look at what happened in the past when the wind blew. Because when we say the wind blew, it could also mean the spirit moved. The first time that the spirit of God moved, it's in Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5. Genesis 1, from verse 1 to 5. Darkness was reigning supreme. And then the Spirit of God moved. The wind blew. And certain things happened immediately. 
one, God spoke. And whenever God speaks, things happen. Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20, he said, He sent His word and He healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. So tonight, in the name that's above every other name, God will speak to you. When God spoke, what he said was, let there be light. Let there be light, which is another way of saying, darkness, get out of the way. And that will be darkness, lose your victims. You know, in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, when the wind blew on Bartimaeus, darkness released him. Oh, by the way, it is interesting that you note that majority of the miracles Jesus performed was performed when he was moving, followed by a great multitude of people. Because when a lot of people are moving together, they star the wind. The wind was blowing when he killed the leper because there was a multitude following him in Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3. Matthew 8, 1 to 3. The wind was blowing because there was a multitude following him when that woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, verse 25, to 34 struggled to touch the hem of his garment and she got completely healed there was a multitude following him the wind was blowing when he met the woman of Nain that widow who was going to bury her only son and Jesus Christ stopped the journey to the graveyard and the woman never wept again. We are many here tonight. We are many here. We are many in the old auditorium. And we are many in some other viewing stations. And so I believe that even as we continue to Minister unto the Lord. The wind will blow and it will single out individuals for special miracles. When the wind blew the very first time, God spoke. And all he has to do is speak. Whenever he speaks, it is a decree. When the word went out from this altar, some time ago, as a testimony to her, that there were some people who, who will never fail again, we began to hear the testimonies. And may I trust in my Father in heaven boldly declare again that there is someone here who will never fail again. You won't fail exams again. Your business won't fail again. Your marriage won't fail again.
your pregnancy will not be aborted again. The second time that the wind blew, you will find in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, God formed the man of the dust of the ground, ordinary dross, dust of the ground. Dross molded ordinary clay. And then breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. The wind went into that mud. And what happened? Immediately, mud became a living soul. From mud came something so precious that it cannot be purchased with money. In Matthew chapter 8, I mean Mark rather, Mark chapter 8, from verse 36 to 37, Mark 8, 36 to 37, the Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? That soul that came when God breathed into ordinary mouth became something so precious that all the money in the world cannot pay for one soul. And when we are talking about all the money in the world, there are some of us listening to me who think that they are rich. Some of us haven't, we don't even know what rich means. But imagine somebody who owns all the money in America, in Europe, in the Arab nations, plus the little we have in Africa. And yet God says, all his money is not enough to buy a soul. You know, that's why I always tell my children, you may not look like it, but you're a very, very important personality to God. Because if you are the only one alive, Jesus Christ will see have come down to die for you. That's how precious you are. Tell your neighbor, Hey, you are sitting next to a VIP, you know. Uh, you may not think I am a VIP, but I'm a VIP to God. When the wind blows, someone who is considered a nobody can suddenly become a very significant person. And you know, God made a promise in January. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to come to pass. He says specifically that there is someone who started the year as a nobody who will end the year as very somebody. Believe it or not, it's going to come to pass. That is why when you are still breathing, uh, if that breath is still in there, there is hope for you. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 says, uh, 
Even a living dog is better than a dead lion. I'm still alive. I'm still breathing. I know my tomorrow will still be all right. So if anybody thinks they are writing you off, they are wasting their time. Tell your neighbor again, my tomorrow is going to be all right. Uh, I'm still breathing, you know. That's why Psalm 150, verse 6, Psalm 150, verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Another time that the wind blew, I'll be mentioned by mommy while she was praying. Incidentally, when she said Genesis 14, she wanted to say Exodus 14. I'm sure you, you know that's just a slip of the tongue. Thank you, Father. The Lord said there's someone who, who said, God Almighty, you must speak to me today. Well, he says, if you are the one, I'm to tell you, it is not over yet. In Exodus chapter 14, you know the entire story from verse 1 to 28. Exodus 14 from verse 1 to 28. When the children of Israel go to the Red Sea, and Pharaoh and his army who are coming from behind, they had a choice. Either to go back into bondage, or to die by the Red Sea. But the wind blew. And one of the major things that happened when the wind blew is that all of a sudden there was a way where there was no way before. That's the chorus of the song that we sang. When the wind blows for you tonight, all of a sudden, where there had been no way before, there will be a way for you. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus Christ said in John 14, verse 6, John 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way. Even before he said, I am the truth and the life, he said, first of all, I am the way. So even if everybody has written you off and the wind blows for you, God can still surprise them. Oh, yes, he can. He's done it before. He do it again. I mean, in, in, in John chapter 11, from verse 34 to, well, 34 to 45, you can read it from the beginning. John 11, from the beginning to the end. It tells you the story of Lazarus. By the time Jesus arrived, Lazarus had been dead and buried for four days. Everybody believed that it's too late. The sisters said so. Lord, if you had arrived earlier, if this Holy Ghost service had happened maybe in June, if only 
Daddy had prayed for me last month. Or oh, somehow earlier than today, maybe there would have been hope. I want you to know that my God is never late. And your miracle will come today. The sisters of Lazarus told the Lord Jesus, it's too late. By now he's thinking. And particularly when they saw even Jesus Christ weeping, they thought, ah, okay. We saw God all over. I agree with the prophecy that has come out already today. As far as you are concerned, it's not over yet. There is always one last card that God can play when everybody else had given up hope. In the story of the woman with the issue of blood that we mentioned earlier on in, in Mark chapter 5. Oh, thank you, Father. When the Lord said, there's someone listening to me, I don't know whether you are here or you are watching on television, but he asked me to tell you, you will not die. In the case of the woman with the issue of blood, she had tried everything. Everything had failed. I thank God for the testimonies of tonight. A fellow who had been told by the doctor, there's no way you and your wife can produce a child. And God said, well, if they say there's no way, I am see the way. There is always a last card in the hand of the Almighty God. And that young man said, I have tried work, I failed. I tried, is it Neko or whatever they call it? I have failed again and again and again. And then God said, oh, there's somebody who will never fail again. And, and in the name that's above every other name, every door that has been shut against you will be blown open. God made a way where there was no way before. And then did something extra. That day when the wind blew, he told the enemies to pursue these people. And they followed. And then he turned the tide against them. And I want to make an appeal to you. From now on, don't pray for the destruction of your enemies. Pray that God will have mercy on them. Because they are, they are already in great trouble. Fighting against a child of God. Remember what God said to King Saul, I mean to Saul on the road to Damascus? He said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Anyone that is persecuting you as a child of God is already in trouble. So what you should do, don't add to his trouble. Ask for mercy for him. I've said it before. It is written, thou preparest a table before me. Where? In the presence of my enemies. 
If you pray that God will kill all your enemies, who will be there to watch you enjoy? Do I hear somebody say, God have mercy on all my enemies and save their souls? Because it's a very dangerous thing to fight against a child of God. Why? Because our God, even though He's love, is also a consuming fire. Another case when the wind blew. I'm moving a bit fast because tonight being the last Holy Ghost service of the year. Uh, the pastor will be praying for every one of you to put a seal on your blessings so that by the time you come for the Congress you will already have many testimonies to share. In 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 9 to 15 Second Kings chapter 2 from verse 9 to 15. The wind blew. When the wind blew, certain things happened. Number one, Elijah was taken by a wild wind to heaven. So somebody cheated death. Because it is written, it is appointed unto man who wants to die. There's an appointment with death. But God can change things. He's sovereign. The wind blew. And Elijah went up by a wild wind to heaven. I've always had that feeling that there might be some of us who will never taste death. You know, there's something called rapture. We we'll just come to a Holy Ghost service like this, and we are singing and praising God. And the trumpet will sound. And where you are seated, the only thing that will remain there will be the dress you are wearing. Because we won't need that dress in heaven. If the, if, if the, if the trumpet sounds tonight, how many of you will go with the Lord? Elijah cheated death. He took away Enoch. That's another fellow who cheated death. The Bible just said that Enoch was walking with God. I mean, one Sunday school child was asked, what did you learn in school today, in Sunday school today? He said, they told us the story of Enoch. Okay, what, what do you understand by the story? He said, they told us Enoch is a friend of God. And once in a while, God will come and visit him. And when God is going back, Enoch will escort God. He said, one day, Enoch was escorting God. And they were enjoying their fellowship. And they kept on going and going. And by the time he looked back, his house was far away. So he said to God, eh, let's just continue. Sounds like a childish story. I still believe that God may take some of us away by the rapture. If he takes us away by the rapture, Will you be among us? In that case, I will see you in heaven in Jesus' name. 
But there are people who even die of old age and the way they go is almost like the rapture. There's an uncle of mine went to church on Sunday. It was Thanksgiving Sunday. Dance, worship God. Everybody noticed that. He came back home, took breakfast while the wife was preparing for lunch. And then while they were preparing the pandemia, he went into the toilet to ease himself. When the pandemia was ready, the wife knocked at the uh, door of the toilet. Darling, your lunch is ready. Darling, darling, darling was gone. That's a good way for a child of God to go. Go to church, worship God, come home, eat pandemia, and go. <laughs> the wind can just blow you straight into heaven. I pray for all the old ones among us. If the Lord delays his coming, when it is time for you to go, after you have fulfilled your days, you will not suffer. But then there's something more interesting that happened when the wind blew to take Elijah away. And that is the fact that when Elijah said to Elisha, what shall I do for you before I be taken away from you? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Remember what Elijah said? He said, you have asked a hard thing. Whenever the wind blows, difficult prayers are answered. No matter how difficult the prayer, if the wind blows, the answer will come. And it will, it's not that it will come a month's time. It will come that day. How many of you have something big you want to ask God for today? I thank God on your behalf. Because as the wind will blow, before we leave here, the answer to your prayers will come. Because in John chapter 14, verse 14. Thank you, Father. Maybe I should say amen to this before I tell you. The Lord said there's someone here today, he said you came. Believing that all will be well. He asked me to tell you, by this time next week, you will be saying, all is well. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. I want to say amen to this also. The Lord asked me to tell someone that he still has some pleasant surprises for you before the end of the year. No matter how big what you ask for, God can give you much bigger things. Particularly if the wind blows. Remember clearly what, I, what you know already. All I asked God for was a house. And he decided I will give you a city. May I decree in the name of the one who called me. No matter how big your request tonight, may God give you something bigger. Yeah. 
I can go on and on and on and show you what happens when the wind blows. In the case of Elijah versus Elisha that we mentioned earlier on, when the wind blew, Elisha woke up a servant and went to bed a master. When the wind blows, it accelerates your promotion. It moves you from a point A to point B so rapidly that you yourself won't even know what's going on. I have good news for someone here. This is me speaking, and I know my father is backing me up. Before I see you again, you will be on a higher level. Now, let me just mention so what somebody had mentioned earlier. And what, that's what I would probably call the greatest wind of change that blew. That's in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4. Acts 2, 1 to 4. That's on the day of Pentecost. The wind blew, and the Holy Spirit came. And several things happened. And I think my son mentioned it. That the disciples who were afraid before didn't know fear anymore. You know, many of us are in bondage to Satan because of fear of death. That's what the Bible says. But when the wind blows and you don't know fear anymore, you become completely free from Satan. You know the reason why some people are afraid to serve God? They are afraid that if they serve God, something will happen. You had the testimony of that young man. The father told him, you go to church, you will go mad. On another occasion, he wanted to pray for a mad fellow. He said, you pray for that fellow, you will go mad. Satan is a specialist in fear. You know, some of us are even afraid to ask for big things from God. On one occasion, I've had somebody when who said, ask for something big from God. And his friend said, what did you ask for? Ah. And he said, I said to God, it would be a wonderful idea, oh God, if you can buy me a bicycle. And the friend said, ah, why did you ask for a car? He said, ah, a car. Where will I get the money to buy petrol? If God can buy you, <laughs> if he can buy you a car, he will buy the petrol. How many of you Today we say, from now on, I will never be afraid again. Because fear can hinder you, even from your blessings. Physically, materially, even spiritually. I don't want to tell stories tonight because, like I said, I, I want you to be ministered to, hands laid on you tonight. But do you remember the story when I said I needed five pounds in London and the Almighty God provided 
five pounds miraculously. And I said, ah, if I know you will answer me this quickly, I would have asked for 100. And he provided another five miraculously. And I said, ah, I don't know this thing. We walk this way. Uh, maybe I should have asked for 150. And he provided. And I became afraid. And I said, God, I'm, I'm joking. Oh, please. The original 50 was enough. That spirit that is saying you must remain small, I rebuke it today. You remember what God told me later on, years later, when I told the story in one of the meetings, and God said to me, Son, you asked for 50. That's why I gave you 50. If you have asked me for 5,000, I would have given you 5,000. I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, the very best you can ever give, give it to me tonight. Open your mouth and cry on to him just for a few minutes. The very best you can give to me, give to me tonight. He answers hard prayers when the wind blows. He answers hard prayers. The very best you can give me, O oh Lord. The very, very best you can give to any man. That's what I want, Daddy. Release it to me tonight, even as the wind blows. Let it blow in the very best for me, the very, very best. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so shall it be. When we got to this camp, I told you, we built the first auditorium, 100 meters by 50 meters. And my children said, oh, this is the biggest auditorium in Africa. Let's wall it around. I said, but we haven't even started. Ah. This is big enough. But the second year we had to extend and then extend and then extend until we can't extend anymore and we decided to build another one. And they, which is now the children section. And by the time we finished that, they said, now we have arrived. And I said, no. And then we build what we now call the old auditorium. And they said, now we have arrived. Now the old auditorium, you can see it on the screen, is now an overflow. And then I told them we are coming to build a three by three auditorium, where we are now. And I know people who said to me, now that is taking it too far. Who told you this is the last one we are going to build? We haven't started yet. Lift your hand to heaven and say, Father, don't let the sky be my limit. Let heaven alone be my limit. When the wind blows, you get hard prayers answered. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Now, so the people in the upper room lost fear. From that moment on, they became bold. The weak became powerful. 
Because the Lord has said, when you receive power, I mean, when you, you will receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The one who was an ordinary fisherman became somebody whose uh, shadow can heal the sick. The ordinary became extraordinary. And the wind will blow for you tonight. Now, thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. All very big tonight. That's why I keep saying amen, amen. Because the Lord asked me to tell someone, he said, within the first quarter of the new year, your testimony will be complete. And you say, why do you say amen to that, sir? That is telling me that whether the devil likes it or not, I am going to see the new year. And I will see you in the new year. Thank you, Father. Amen and amen. <laughs> Daddy said, there's someone here tonight. He said, I will take sugar away from you and give you honey. <laughs> of course, you, I must tell you the truth that when the wind blows secrets are exposed so before you begin to say let the wind blow examine yourself because the wind will blow as a matter of fact God told us you remember January 1 he told you that the wind will blow this year. And the wind has been blowing. And some secrets have been already exposed. And from the look of things, from what I'm sensing concerning the coming year, <laughs> the wind is going to become stronger. Which means if you have some devilish secrets that you are hiding, the wind will blow it open. Unless you quickly amend your ways, unless you quickly confess and forsake your evil ways, the wind is blowing. And it's not going to stop blowing. So it it's all depends on is the wind blowing for you or against you? You see, because it is the wind that opened the way in the Red Sea for the children of Israel. It's the same way, the same wind that drowned the army of Pharaoh. So is the wind blowing in your favor or against you? God is sovereign. Psalm 115, verse 3. Psalm 115, verse 3. Our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. Like the text we read at the beginning. The wind blows wherever it wants. And 
just hear the sound you can see it blows and God can ask the wind to blow in your favor But if he looks at you and he knows that he has pleaded with you, he has spoken to you about surrendering your life to Jesus, and you have resisted, or you claim to be a child of God and you are living as a child of the devil, hey, one day the wind will blow. And when it blows, you won't be able to hide. There's nowhere you can hide from God. Not too long ago, they caught a man on this camera. He used to be one of the security people. Then he resigned from the security outfit and bought Keke Marua and began to operate on the camera on the holy city of God he wasn't afraid he didn't know God is here watching but he was using his Keke uh, Marua to transport stolen goods out of the camp. And whenever he got to the gate, because he used to be one of the guards, oh, they just salute and let him go. But the wind blew and God caught him. And when God caught him, when God catches somebody, there's no escape. Are you still involved in sin? When the wind blows, secret will be out. That's for those of you who have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ. I'm going to call on you in a moment. To come and surrender your life to him. It's up to you. God is sovereign. He does as he pleases. But he has made arrangements for you to move in such a way that he will cause the wind to blow in your favor. He said, ah, I love those who love me. That's what he said in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Proverbs 8, 17. I love those who love me. And those who seek me early will find me. He said in Romans chapter 9, verse 15. Romans 9, verse 15. He said, I will show mercy unto whom I will show mercy. I decide who will obtain mercy. But quickly he added in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Matthew 5, 7, he said, Hey, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And then he said in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He said, If you hide your sin, you can prosper. He said, but if you confess your sin and forsake them, he said, you will have mercy. When you say you are giving your life to Jesus Christ, what you are actually saying is, Lord, let the wind blow in my favor. I'm confessing my sin. I'm forsaking them. I'm asking, show me mercy. But before I close, I have a word of encouragement for those of us who have made up our minds, we will do his will all the way. And the word of encouragement is this. Wind 
and fire are very good partners. Wind and fire, they are good partners. You go through the scriptures, First Kings chapter 19, verse 11 to 12, First Kings 19, 11 to 12, you hear that when God wanted to come and visit Elijah, oh, the wind blow, the fire was there before God showed up. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9 to 15, 2 Kings 2, 9 to 15, when the wind came to take Elijah to heaven, there was also the horses and chariots of fire. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, when the, the sound of a mighty roaring wind filled the house, the Holy Spirit came as cloven tongues of fire. The two of them go together. If the fire is small and the wind blows, the fire becomes big. So when you say let the wind blow, it's another way of saying let the fire fall. Which explains the reason why the wind can bring about tremendous change. Because when fire touches anything, that thing can never remain the same. There is no science for changing ashes back to firewood. So when we pray tonight and say, let the wind blow, we are also saying, let the fire fall. Meaning what? The changes that will happen tonight will be permanent. The promotion that God will give tonight will be permanent. The victory that God will give tonight will be permanent. So keep that in mind when it is time to pray. But in the meantime, if you have not yet given your life to Jesus and you want to do so, before the wind blows all your secret into the open, and you want the wind of God to blow in your favor, not against you, I'm going to count from 1 to 15. Before I say 15, come and stand before the altar so that together we can pray for you and the Lord will save your soul. I'm beginning to count now. So if you want to come to give your life to Jesus, begin to run forward now because I know some of you will be coming from a long way. Those of you on the way, keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. And those of you already in front, open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Forgive all my sins. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Come and live inside of me. I will do your will for the rest of my life. Please save my soul. Go ahead, pray. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them. And pray that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. That God will forgive all their sins. That his blood will wipe away all their sins. And he will give them a brand new beginning that they become true children of the living God. Pray for them, brethren. Pray for them. Intercede for them that God will give them genuine salvation 
And those of you still on the way, hurry up because I must pray now for salvation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, I want to bless your holy name for your word. And I want to thank you very, very much for those who have heard your word and have decided to surrender their lives to you now. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life. And from now on, let them become true children of the living God. Father, when the wind begins to blow tonight, let it blow in their favor. And from now on, any time they cry unto you, please answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now you want to write down your prayer points. Number one, you want to thank God for making sure you are a partaker of tonight's service. When the wind of change is going to blow. And then number two, you're going to cry to him and say, Father, let your wind blow anything called darkness away from my home. Anything associated with darkness, let your wind blow them away from my home, from my life. And number three, you will say, Father, please. Blow into me and fill up all my emptiness. Blow into me and fill up all my emptiness. Number four. Father, please make a way for me where there has been no way before. Make a way for me where there has been no way before. Number five. Father, please don't let me know fear ever again. Because the Bible says fear has torment. Father, don't let me know fear again. Number six, you say, Father, every evil left in this old year, blow them away from my home. Every evil left in this old year. Father, blow them away from my home. Number seven, 
Number seven. Father, every blessings left in this old year, blow into my home. Number eight. Father, let the heavenly fire fall on me again tonight. Let the heavenly fire fall on me again tonight. And number nine, that will be your own private request. Now the altar is open. You can come and start with thanking God, blessing His holy name for making it possible to be here tonight. And then keep on praying and presenting your case to him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. mighty name we have prayed the almighty God will grant your request he will speak life into you darkness will leave you alone He will turn your emptiness to fullness. He will make a way for you. 
Every impossibility in your life will become possible. No matter how difficult your prayer requests, He will grant them. He will accelerate your promotion. You will never know fear again. You will never know sorrow again. Any evil left in this old year will be blown away from you. Every blessing left in this old year will be blown into your homes. God will answer your prayers. He shall be well with you. And your blessings of tonight will be permanent. The wind will blow in your favor. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I shout hallelujah and go back to your seats. God bless you. Now the ministers of God will please take position because the Bible says if two of us shall agree as touching anything we ask on earth it will be done for us by our Father in heaven. So the pastors will line up and those of you in the congregation will then go to the nearest person to you among them. All they will do will be just to lay their hands on your head as a sign of agreement that the wind will blow in your favor. The the choir will please get ready and worship God as uh, the ministers of God will begin to lay hands. Pastors, God bless you. Let's take position very quickly. Even as the choir begins to minister. He's a miracle God. My God is a miracle God. My God is a miracle God. My God is a miracle God. My God, my God is a miracle God. My God is a miracle God. In the 
lay hands on you by now then you have to really run to the pastors but the rest of us that they have laid hands on uh, we have two more things to do very quickly one we want to say thank you to the almighty God uh, so you get your offering ready and after that I want to talk to you for a few minutes and then we'll be on our way. So, thank you, band. You've been doing a great job. Let's take our Thanksgiving offering and go to the nearest basket, dance, rejoice, and then go back to your seats. Over to you, band. Be follower, Foko, follower, follow what a be, oh, yeah, yeah. I know that for love, you wait for you, I for you, for love, for my What a be, oh, yeah, yeah. I know that for love, you wait. Come on, be for you, for love, 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 for love,
Well, if you are really sure that God has blessed you tonight, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> okay, before I bless your offering, just a few words uh, before we go. You know, it's time to advertise the Congress. And you know how we have been doing it in the past? You wear the advert, just like you see me wearing this one. And you can have a face cap. You can have an armband. You can get a blackboard and write Congress 2024 Onward Christian Soldiers Time December 9 to uh, what date? 15 and place the blackboard in front of your house you'd use every method you can think of to inform people about what is coming. That's apart from telling them, and if you have the money, you can print uh, handbills. You just want to make sure that if they don't come, it won't be your fault. You would have told them. And remember, I've told you this before. Many a times, you have to tell 10 people for one fellow to come. So keep on telling as many people as possible. Phone them. Text them. Uh, when I'm talking about this to them abroad, when we're advertising Holy Ghost services abroad, I love to make them laugh. So I will say, phone them, email them, text them, uh, uplink them. Uh, eh? You know the rest of the story. And then finally download them to redemption camp. Use every method you can think of to make sure you tell everybody. Tell your friends, tell your enemies. If they come before they leave, they will no longer be your enemies because they'll be grateful to you for bringing them here. And I'm telling you, this year's Congress is going to be like no Congress you have ever known before. So invite your friends, invite your co-workers, advertise it in buses. When you ride in a taxi with anybody, tell everybody in the taxi, everybody you can think of, tell them. And when you are coming, if you have the means, I mean, for example, if you have a car, give somebody a ride. Make it easy for people to come. The more you do, the more God will bless you. Because this is, this is the way you can give Jesus Christ a Christmas present. And you give him a Christmas present, he will give you a Christmas present. And you know his own presence will be far, far superior to yours. So how many of us will say we will go all out and advertise the coming Congress? Let me see your hand. Wave the hand so that I know you really. Ah, and let me hear you shout a Congress hallelujah. Good. Stand on your feet. Father, I just want to thank you on behalf of your children. Thank you for visiting us tonight. 
and thank you for everything you have already done. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, please accept our offerings. Bless it. Use it for your glory. And let your wind blow in favor over our finances. Please, Lord, don't let us ever lack again. Your children are going now. Please go with them. Grant them journey mercies. And everyone they speak to this time around, bring them to your Congress. And even before the beginning of the Congress itself, let your children be full of wonderful testimonies. Forever, O oh Lord, let your wind blow in their favor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody now shout the biggest hallelujah you have ever shouted. <laughs>